Peace and greetings, peace and greetings to the family. Brother Divine here, representing a Culture Shock LLC. And uh, this is day 11 of Life as an Entrepreneur. And uh, today is Wednesday. And like I say, we're kind of changing up the format a little bit. We have theme days now. I'm still going to, you know, take y'all out on the field when I'm, you know, uh, doing my vending and adventure and whatnot. But I just want to be a little bit more detailed and give you guys a little bit more information about, you know, just uh, things that can help you. Uh, starting out as a business on the owner or whatnot so like I said today is Wednesday so today's theme is going to be WCW Wednesday and it's not Women Crush Wednesday WCW stands for what content works Wednesday okay <laughs> pretty much I'm going to be giving out social media marketing tips so uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the uh, content today or whatnot. And uh, yeah, that's this is something that a lot of people, they, they kind of don't know what type of content uh, to produce. Uh, it gets kind of hard after a while because it, it's, it's to come up with original content of, uh, you know, things for your own business or whatnot. It's, it's very time consuming, especially when you have multiple social media uh, platforms like myself like I have a Pinterest and uh, Instagram Twitter uh, TikTok I haven't been active on my TikTok but I'm going to be active on that real real soon uh, I also have the Facebook and then a snapchat and also you know I'm managing this uh, this YouTube channel or whatnot so it's very time consuming so that's why I wanted to make Wednesdays uh, you know just dealing with uh, social media marketing tips and things of that nature so um, like I said, we're going to go ahead and jump into it now. Um, the benefits of social media marketing, if you don't know, if you've been hiding under a rock, um, a lot of it is free. Um, if you're producing like really, really good visual content or whatnot, um, you can, you know, and if you have a big following too, and if you have a strong following, um, your following is really what makes you on social media, you know, as far as like uh, engagements. Uh, we'll talk about that in another uh vlog or whatever as far as like engagements and things of that nature but uh, like I'm saying a lot of the services are free uh, they do have paid services or whatnot and we'll talk about that a little bit later um, but what I'm going to do now is I want to pull up this uh, this diagram this picture right and it's called the conversion funnel okay and you see it's shaped just like a little oil funnel or whatnot and uh, you see what it has right there it has at the top visitors from your social media then it has the prospect level then it has the lead level and then it has the buyer level right there so what is pretty much showing you that uh, if more people arrive at the top of the funnel theoretically uh, more will progress through the uh, through the steps of prospect and qualified leads to become customers only two to four percent on average uh, actually make it through two buyers or whatnot so this is you want this is why you want to cast that net that's what they call like a marketing net. You want to make it as big as possible, whatnot, because you're only going to get so many people to actually make it down to the end of the funnel to become actual uh, buyers or whatnot. So you want to make that net as big as possible, uh, you know, covering all bases uh, as far as like your social media marketing. And uh, what you want to do is you also want to integrate your social media into your overall marketing effort or whatnot. So let me pull up this other picture. I'm going to show you the marketing mix mix right here and this is a, a typical online marketing mix and uh, pretty much to get the maximum benefit from social media you, uh, social media you must have a hub site now the site uh, that's pretty much the site which all the traffic is going to be directed to now you want to start where you can but eventually you're going to need an actual domain name an actual uh, .com with your business name or whatnot because it just doesn't look professional uh, having a domain name with, uh, like a third party. Me example, using the Etsy. But like I said, you have to start where you can. You know, you got a problem before you walk or whatnot. So uh, that's pretty much showing the whole, uh, the marketing, uh, the whole mix right there. And uh, like I said, you wanna take advantage of, you know, you see the press releases, uh, your natural search engine marketing, your pay per click ads, pay banner ads, uh, e-newsletter social media and your blog you see it's all going right there to your main hub which will be uh, your actual domain name with your business name the actual dot com so uh, that's your marketing mix that's what it looks like so also um, 
you want to know what platforms to use for what type of content or whatnot that's uh, also key uh, with your social media marketing and whatnot so Facebook is pretty much uh, it's best for like video content or whatever especially like live videos uh, it's good for like uh, sharing curated photo collections also customer service uh, via your messenger or whatnot it's instant access to your customers you know if they have a problem or whatnot with any of your products or services also sharing product listings and uh, connecting and reaching broad very uh, varied audiences uh, what is not good for is like a younger audience uh, including teens or whatnot so it's pretty much good for like a uh, instant uh, uh, communication with your customers and clients uh, so that's what you want to use your Facebook for now IG your Instagram is best for like visual uh, strong visuals cross promo attracting influencers giveaways behind the scenes actions uh, you know you can do that on your uh, Instagram story uh, also reaching that younger audience I was talking about TikTok is another one where all the young people uh, congregate or whatnot so the TikTok and IG are good for like younger people a younger audience uh, IG is not good for like overly promotional content so you want to tell like a story visually on your uh, Instagram like I say you want to have very sh uh, strong visuals uh, a lot of people don't have pictures like I say I do uh, if you're into like the crafts like I am or whatnot, you will want to have a, a Pinterest page because uh, Pinterest is best for like trend uh, lovers or whatnot, on trend products, uh, visual thinkers, inspirational boards, you know, uh, just showing people your creative process or whatnot. But what it's not good for is like extensive or timely copies as far as like your ad copies and things of that nature. Uh, Twitter. And I'm kind of, to be honest, I really don't like Twitter because it's just so many spam pages. This is me personally, but I do have it. Uh, I'm kind of building it up or whatever. I got a couple followers, so uh, like I say, don't leave money on the table just because personal preference. Get it, because you never know. Uh, but Twitter is like best for like uh, asking followers questions, running polls about products they'll like to see. Uh, you know, you come out with retweeting positive feedback, uh, but it's bad for like long copy ads which we already know is, is short form is you you can only have so many characters on your Twitter so um, that's self-explanatory or whatnot so uh, anytime you go on a social media uh, marketing campaign or whatnot you want to have some type of goals and uh, that you want to achieve with each uh, one of your campaigns and these goals should be like a, you know driving traffic to your hub site making sales uh, building brand recognition uh, establishing your expertise uh, improving search engine rankings, uh, building trust, uh, inspire customer loyalty, generate subscriptions and registrations, uh, also engage with your customers and clients, build a link to your content and generate leads uh, or new opportunities or whatnot. So uh, these are just a couple goals that anytime you do a marketing campaign, you just want to make sure that you're you have some type of goal and just not just posting content just to be posting content or whatnot and also you want to create like an editorial calendar uh, to keep you know your content flowing and whatnot especially if you're by yourself or whatnot you don't have a team it's good to have that calendar it'll keep you on track uh, with deadlines you know to get certain uh, material out or whatnot um, it also allows you to uh, you know plan accordingly ensure that you're not duplicating any type of content it also enables you to plan seasonally or timely content uh, like I said it gives you deadlines to meet and it also enables you to post uh, content regularly or whatnot and uh, also you don't always want to make your content about selling your products so a nice uh, general balance for uh, posting content on social media you want to make it like 70% lifestyle posts and 30% po uh, promotional posts or whatnot so uh, it doesn't just seem uh, salesy all the time or whatnot and the content doesn't get uh, stale so you want to be wary of that and stay uh, within that balance of the 70-30 so, so um, another thing you want to be aware of is uh, the five levels of product awareness or whatnot when you're creating your content and uh, to be effective you want to educate people first to uh, progress through these levels of awareness or whatnot so uh, the first level is your most aware uh, customers or clients. These are people who know your products or your services well. They are brand ambassadors. They have multiple purchases, and they also in, uh, openly endorse you. These are pretty much your A customers uh, that I was talking about in the, uh, and I want to say that was in the day 10 blog or whatnot. 
uh, these are your brand ambassadors. Or they're always going to be your biggest cheerleaders and whatnot and getting the word out there about uh, your products and services. Uh, also, you have your product aware people. These are people who know your product and services but haven't purchased. Uh, they're familiar with what is available, but they don't know which solution is better as far as like, you know, you or your competition. So uh, these are people that you're going to have to build up to that level of, uh, you know, the most aware or whatnot. And we're going to talk about how you uh, actually build these people up through this uh, whole product awareness or whatnot. So uh, solution aware people, uh, they know of uh, different solutions to their problem. But they don't know which solution is better and uh, also they probably don't even know about your products or services or whatnot so they're aware of a solution uh, they just don't know about yours or whatnot then you have the problem aware people they recognize they have a problem but they don't know uh, they don't know what to do about it or whatnot so they just they, they're aware of a problem but they don't know about the solution and then you just have unaware people uh, they don't even realize they have a problem so what I'm going to do now is are going to pull up this uh, this uh, image or whatnot, and they call it upside or whatnot. It's an upside staircase. Now, pretty much that uh, what I just took you through, like I was saying, it was the uh, product awareness, the five levels of product awareness. This is pretty much flipped upside down to, like I was saying, to raise people to uh, the most aware of your product or whatnot, and uh, that's the D in the uh, upside uh, staircase or whatnot. So what upside stands for is uh, unaware, problem uh, aware, solution aware, your solution aware, and then the deal or whatnot. So the higher you start on this staircase, the more direct you can uh, go in for the sale or whatnot. But also realize your audience will be smaller because these people they know about you know all of their uh, solutions you know to their problem and whatnot as far as yours in the competition so um, you know that's a smaller uh, market that you're uh, pretty much uh, you're shooting for so what you really want to do is you want to uh, start low and uh, also you know the more value uh, when you start low the more value you need to provide to uh, move people up the staircase but the easier it is to scale because uh, the market that you're targeting is, is way bigger or whatnot because you're starting with pretty much uh, babies. They don't know anything. Like I said, they're, they're probably unaware that they even have a problem. So uh, that gives you a chance to introduce people that didn't even know about your products or whatnot to your brand. And, uh, you know, once you take them all the way up, uh, you might end up uh, creating like uh, A customers or whatnot. Like I say, brand ambassadors. The ones that's going to be your biggest cheerleaders and uh you know represent you and your company man as far as like your brand so um like i add kind of, excuse me i add breakdown of what you're going to try to do to achieve is to give your audience like a big aha moment so what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to come with something going against conventional wisdom and really grabs attention you know coupled with great uh content to add value which uh, this will make people that you know see this, they'll they'll start wanting to share, and uh, be a part you know of the brand itself. You know these are like I say, this is how you create brand ambassadors. So uh, next, I want to talk about the six principles of uh, why people pretty much share content, and this is what uh, these are six things that you pretty much want to you know center your content around to get people to actually share your content and you know build up engagements or whatnot. So. So the six principles of why people uh, share content, uh, number one is going to be social currency because uh, pretty much we're going to share things that's going to make us look good. So, you know, you just got to face it, we're human. We're all de dealing and battling with our egos or whatnot. So, uh, yeah, we're going to share things that make us look good. Uh, number two is going to be triggers and pretty much uh, top of mind is going to be tip of tongue, whatever, you know, in your... Uh, your thought process at that time uh if it's posted or whatnot and it triggers that you know in the you know being at the top of the mind or whatnot you're pretty much going to probably share it uh number three is going to be emotions pretty much when we care we're going to share um number four is going to be public visibility uh when something is built to show it's built to grow uh, number five is going to be practical value something that uh pretty much something that you can use or whatnot this pretty much self-explanatory practical value and then the sixth principle of why we share content is going to be stories you know info that can be shared in an entertaining manner or whatnot and uh that kind of puts me in mind with a lot of the content that i see uh, businesses use on uh, tiktok 
kind of make it in a, a funny type of way or whatnot. So um, those are like pretty much, uh, like I say, the, the things that make us want to share content. Now, uh, we were talking about product awareness, but now I want, uh, I want to talk about audience awareness and how to understand, uh, you know, what level uh, your audience is at as far as, you know, well, I'm talking about audience awareness. So I'm going to pull up this picture. It's called the uh, customer buying cycle. And this is just pretty much the cycle that uh, everybody goes through before they actually make a purchase or whatnot. So uh, it's going to start with awareness, as you see right there on the chart. Uh, awareness is pretty much awareness of the problem and the solution is going to start with the problem. Uh, it starts with the problem that you want solved or whatnot. And that's going to lead you to the interest and that's going to lead you to, the, you know, pretty much doing an info search, uh, being able to solve your problem, depending on your uh, current level of market knowledge. You're going to start a search. You're going to go straight to Google. That's what everybody does, pretty much. You're going to go straight to Google and you're going to start doing your research, uh, YouTube, other social media sites or whatnot. And then uh, once you get out of that stage, you're going to lead. it's going to lead you to consideration, evaluation, and comparison. So after gathering your info, uh, the next step is to evaluate your options, not necessarily from a logical perspective, but from one uh, of emotion or whatnot. Um, such as you know how you, this product or uh, solution is going to make you feel after you make the purchase uh, like I say and I've said it plenty of times I know in this uh, vlog thus far it's talking about how emotions uh, pretty much dictate uh, people's buying actions or whatnot so uh, that's going to lead you to the uh, purchase cycle or stage excuse me which uh, pretty much is saying uh, decide with emotion and justify with using logic uh, when the solution feels right, you're going to buy it because pretty much the mind will justify what the heart has already decided. Um, and that's going to lead you to being uh, becoming like an advocate or advocacy or whatever. And it's going to lead you to becoming like a brand uh, ambassador. And uh, pretty much if you truly love the purchase you know, of the product or whatever, you're going to become a number one fan. And you're going to start telling other people. And uh, the reason why you're going to start telling other people this is because for two reasons. Uh, for one, uh, you know, to help others. And then also, this is going to help you further justify your buying decision because if your friends buy it and see the same, uh, you know, buy it for the same solution and they end up liking it just like you did, this is going to, you know, further justify, you know, uh, the fact that you made that purchase or whatnot and make you feel a little bit better. So uh, these are just, uh, you know, some social media marketing tips I wanted to lay on you guys today on this uh on this what content will work Wednesday and uh, like I said I'll be doing this uh, on all Wednesdays you know as far as like building content on the vlog uh, just to give you know just small business owners uh, just a leg up as far as their social media marketing I know building content evergreen content can be like very overwhelming especially if you're doing everything by yourself so uh, hopefully this will help somebody you know watching this so uh, any questions concern comment feedback or anything please feel free to uh, leave it on the uh, YouTube channel or whatnot right here, Life as an Entrepreneur. Or you can uh, actually email me at sardavid83 at gmail.com and I'll uh, respond as, as quick as possible or whatnot. So uh, interviews coming soon uh, in the pipeline. I'm setting up some this week actually. And uh, yeah, just continue to get better with the content. Uh, find another little tidbits or strategies that I can relate to other small business owners to help you guys you know, build your brand up. So. Peace to the family from Brother Divine. We got them drums like percussion, you know that I'm clutching. We came from nothing and came up from hustling. Niggas that had us, these bitches, they love us, they choosing when they see a nigga in public. Two cuffs, nigga, I been sipping mud and shoot this bitch up. If a nigga touch me, boogers in my ear, diamonds all flooded, and I act the ass, nigga, straight don't get I been making plays for a while, I was selling dope as a child. In a house that was smoked out with a crack cloud. Got a stretch of dope, about 14 on the ounce. Shit look like chalk when you break it down. Making my plays while she roll my lounge. Clutching the pistol that got 30 rounds. The ops line, we ain't worried about dying. Nobody high. Turn your ass to a pack and get higher. Then the pilot, cause I get flyer than the plane. When I dress dope, boy, fresh look like I sell dog food or cocaine. When the last time you heard some dope.